In this video, we're going to be answering the top 10 most common questions concerning OBS. So let's go. Hey folks, AJ the CEO here. If this is your first time stopping by the channel, thanks for stopping by and on this channel we focus on tips, training, strategies, reviews, and bills to help modernize your medium industry. So if you're new here, consider subscribing. So I get a bunch of these questions at least a couple of times a day. I also see these questions out on forums and I see them on other threads and I just want to have a concise one answer video to try and answer some of the most common questions that I get and I see um, online. So let's go ahead and start with number one. Can OBS stream to Facebook and YouTube at the same time? Now, the answer to this question is yes and no. So let's do the no first. No, OBS natively by itself cannot live stream to Facebook and YouTube or any multiple platforms at the same time. Now, what it can do, it can point to services like Restream and Caster or Vimeo that actually handle and have multicasting built into it. So you connect OBS to Restream, Restream connects to your multiple accounts, and then it will Restream to all those other platforms at the exact same time. Vimeo has the exact same thing, the live streaming component, the premium package, where you stream to Vimeo, but then Vimeo has a way of connecting to other platforms as well. Caster does the exact same thing, so again, OBS by itself cannot stream to multiple places, but you can have OBS point to one of these services which can do multiple streaming to Facebook, YouTube, and other platforms at the same time. Number two, can you have multiple cameras or capture devices in OBS? The answer is yes. Um, the main thing is you wanna make sure first you got enough ports for it, and then also, can your computer handle it? Of course, you can add multiple capture devices, you can have multiple Elgados, multiple cam links, um, multiple internal cards if your system supports it. It's mainly not really an issue of the software, it's more of a limitation of what your computer can handle. So even if you could connect 10 capture devices, will your computer be able to handle the input from 10 different systems? So that's mainly the limitation. Number three, can I output to a local display like a monitor or projector? The answer is yes. Yes, you can. Just like any other presentation system that can handle that has multiple displays, one shows the interface, the other display is outputting what people can see, that's the exact same way OBS will work. So if you have a secondary monitor inside of, on your computer running OBS, if you click inside the program screen, you can right click and it gives you the options to push the video out to another screen. And I actually did a video about that where you can use this as a switcher, but this will allow you to do live streaming, but at the same time, output whatever you're mixing so that it can go to a projector or a display or anywhere inside the sanctuary if you'd like. Number four, how much does OBS cost? OBS costs nothing. It is actually open source software where it's a community of developers that keep it up and running and updated. So there is no cost to OBS. Number five, does OBS work on Mac, Linux, and PC? Yes, yes it does. Um, again, they're not all in sync with the exact same version. I think the Windows version is ahead of Mac and Linux right now as of the recording of this, but the software is available on all major OSs as in Windows, Linux, and Mac. Number six, how do I connect my camera to OBS? That is very simple. And what I'm gonna do is use the um, 10K <laughs> giveaway PC as an example of how to do this. So let's cut over to the computer. Now in this system, I've included a Blackmagic Design Decklink Mini Recorder, which goes up to a maximum of 1080p at 30 frames a second. So that is a part of it, that's considered an internal capture card and not like the external one. So inside of it, it's really simple. So if I come over here and look at devices, 
in this capture card actually has two inputs it has hdmi and it has sdi so sdi is more of a professional grade connection um, it has a lock to it to the cable so nothing would yank loose but it also has a hdmi so if i pull out my panasonic hc vx 870 here the first thing we know if we flip this open we have We have an H, uh, micro or mini HDMI input or whatever. So we're gonna get that and we're just gonna connect that into the HDMI port of the capture device, the Blackmagic Decklink mini recorder. So let's go ahead and hook that up right now. All right, so I have this plugged in in the back and then we're just gonna go ahead and connect that here. Now you need a capture device um, especially if you don't have a device that doesn't send video over HDMI into the system. I mean over USB into your system, Thunderbolt or something like that. You need a capture device. It just won't work natively unless you're going down NDI and we already talked about that in another video. All right, so we have everything plugged in. Let's go ahead and cut back over to the computer. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn the camera on. And as you can see, it is picking up the resolution that's coming into the capture device from the camera. Now, just let this be known, no matter what type of capture device you have, you need to make sure that the capture device accepts the same resolution that your camera can push out. So again, this is a 4K camera, but it can push out in lower resolutions that this capture device can handle. So you need to be aware of that because if you get a camera that can only do 4K, but your capture card or device can only accept 1080p or 1080i or 720, it won't work. They need to be able to accept a resolution that the all of them can communicate on. So automatically this camera has pushed out a resolution that the capture device can see and we can see it here in the settings. So let's go ahead and close this. And now we're gonna open up OBS. So I am using the complete bundle that is still available that you can get if you want this all laid out for you. So if I come over here to streaming and I already have the Blackmagic capture device here. So what I'm gonna do is come inside of here and I need to set it to auto, which will pull the resolution that the capture card is detecting instead of me manually picking something. And as you can see, it automatically picks up the camera because I'm setting it to auto, which is actually picking up at 1080i because that's what the capture device is accepting. So boom, that's it. That's all I had to do to accept this. Number seven, how do I bring sound into OBS. Now there are multiple ways to do this. Um, you can actually, most computers have a mic in and a line in. You can plug them in that way if you're trying to bring sound from like a sound mixer or an audio board or something like that. Um, you, there are many things you can do. You can get a, a sound interface like the Personas or the Scarlett 2i2 and it converts everything from your analog signal in into USB. So there are multiple ways to do that, but the simplest is to just plug it in with a 3.5 millimeter stereo cable going into the line in or the mic, and you set OBS to look at the mic or the line in, and it brings in sound that way. If you have any other device, kind of like the Personas or the Scarlett or any type of audio interface, normally that will show up as a different device, whether it be USB or something like that, and it will be an option for you to pick that sound to come in. And in OBS, you can have it as a default microphone, or you can specifically make a source for audio input capture, and then you just point that audio input capture to said device. Number eight, how do I sync sound in OBS? Now, there, there are other ways you can do this. Now, if I was to sync sound, what I would really do is actually push the sound into the camera, um, your camera having some type of external mic input. I would let the audio run inside the camera and let the camera do the syncing before it comes to OBS. Now, if you went to one of the previous questions like we had and you're plugging in your sound into um, 
the mic or the line in or audio interface inside of the advanced audio properties you there are a sync offset that you can set to say your sound is coming in faster than the audio you can add a delay onto the sound so it keeps it in sync or and vice versa if the video for some odd reason happens to come faster than the audio you can do a sync that way as well now that's all inside of obs if you really 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 need to have an external device to try and do that you can use like the behringer shark that the audio will go into that and then that loops out into your computer and then that will actually have a delay on itself um, I forgot how many seconds it can delay, but you can delay all the sound coming into that shark before it comes to the computer. So that's another way that you can sync sound in OBS or audio that's coming to OBS. Question number nine, how do I play music in OBS? So just like we talked about before, you could just hook an iPad, your phone or whatever into um, OBS and just play it and actually have that as another input like we talked about before. You could just open up like what I do at church. I open up um, my Google Play library and just play it from the browser. And if I'm on the same computer as my system running OBS, I just use desktop capture, which will capture the sound that's being produced on your computer. That will feed the audio into OBS into your stream. Number 10, what computer specs should I use to run OBS? And I know I've talked about this before when I built systems as well as the live streaming system that I'm giving away. And I'm gonna go ahead and cut back over to the computer and walk through the specs of that system. And that will give you a good idea of what I think is a good specs for your computer that's gonna be handling the live stream. So what I'm using in this system is again a base of the Ryzen 3 3200G, which is a four core processor and has four threads and I honestly wouldn't go anything lower than this I mean this is a great processor and it's only you can get it for like 90 to um, $99 memory isn't that important in your live streaming system especially if this is going to be a dedicated live streaming system but because of the prices I went ahead and put 16 gigs of memory inside of this now let me jump back to the processor this is an APU meaning that the CPU and the GPU are on the same chip so I actually use the GPU to handle the encoding of the video when we're live streaming because it does it in, in my practice of when I've been doing this, it actually has handled it better um, than just the CPU. Now the CPU can do it. I would probably recommend at least going with a, a six core or eight core if you don't have a graphics card that can actually handle like gaming or something like that, which we can hand off the encoding to. Now I also, use an SSD not that it's not not that it's really going to be needed inside of the functions of the live streaming it's just going to make the program run faster so I have an NVMe in here and I have 500 gigs in here you honestly even at my church's live streaming system I only have um, 240 gigabyte SSD because again it's meant mainly just to store a couple of files for like the OBS complete bundle those images that are going to be in the scenes but outside of that I'm not using it for anything other than just the operating system and running the program and that will help make the program run even faster just because of the SSD so those are the things that I would recommend for a live stream a dedicated live streaming system all right that was it the top 10 most common OBS questions that I get and I see online. If you have any other questions that I might have missed, please leave them in the comments and I'll read all the comments and maybe I can get to them and maybe I might even feature them on a part two of this if we have enough questions that are outside of the ones that we talked about. So if you like this type of content, I appreciate a like, consider subscribing and hit that bell. That way you get notified when we come out with other videos to help modernize your media ministry. This is AJ. We will see you on the next video later.